Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go about creating our queue in C++. Now, we're very fortunate because since how similar queues are to stacks, well, stacks have already done most of the heavy lifting for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of the dynamic stack and I'm going to create a new file called the dynamic queue. And now we'll take a look at dynamic queue. So since a queue is also considered generalized, similar to a stack, we're going to leave that template there for data. So we'll keep queue here. And with the queue, uh, it's pretty similar. We want to be aware of the size and the values inside of the queue. So here we'll be renaming the constructor more appropriately for the to represent the class that we're writing. So I'll have Q and another stack. So I'll write this Q. Let's replace this with a Q. We have Q size. Let's match it with our analogous counterparts. And we'll keep going and updating this code. So the constructor, the unparameterized constructor here is the same. So we create an empty queue it should have a size zero and values meaning null when we create our queue with one piece of data whether it be one int or one string one complex class whatever right the size should be one and we should just initialize our values with the data when we copy the constructor we're gonna do the play it safe and we'll take a copy of the data and then we'll copy it over to our class itself right with the destructor we want to have the same process it's still dynamically allocated data it's just how we're adding to the data is different so now instead of having a top function with the queue, it's going to be a little bit different. We want to get the front and the back of the data. The front being where we're going to dequeue data, which is going to be the, the top for the stack. And we want to get the back of our queue, where we just inserted our data. And here what I'll do, we just want to return the beginning of our dynamically allocated array so we can just do this. I added parentheses for well, habit's sake. So here's where our biggest difference is going to be when we're enqueuing data, when we're adding data. So instead of push, I'm going to rename this to enqueue. We have, if it's empty, uh, we'll follow the same thing if it was a stack. Here we'll create a copy for our data. We'll copy it here, all the same. Here with our values, we'll delete it and we'll allocate a new space. Now, here's where it's different from the stack. So with the stack on this line, we're going to be adding to the end of the dynamically allocated array. But the thing is, is that with a queue, we need to add it to the beginning. So here, can we keep the parentheses? Nah, we don't have to. I'm going to add the data to the beginning of values. And here, when we're copying over the array, I'm going to add an offset of 1. Right? So here is when the end queuing is actually done, and we copy the rest of the data here. And that's really it for the stack in terms of programming. The rest of the functionality should be the same. When we go to pop, now going to be called dq. If it's empty, we don't want to do anything. If it sizes 1, we want to ensure that we have the correct process of making sure that it meets the conditions that it's empty. Otherwise, we just want to copy the data as if it was any other dynamically allocated array. Print, well, this is still a dynamically allocated array, so this should stay the same, as well as empty. All our conditions will have been met for making this empty, so we should be fine. 
search should be fine as well too. The only thing that is left to do is to refactor this code, meaning to update our variable documentation, but leave the functionality the same. And that will really conclude the the code for the stack. What we call uh, yeah, we have our DQ. We should probably update our standard out to say, hey, we cannot pop an empty queue. Let's see what else we should refactor. That's fine, that's fine. Ah, the refactoring of the equals operator. Q, good thing we called it right hand side. Q, good, good, good. Ah, uh, this is much more abstract. Good. I'll, I'll replace this with a Q. And something to highlight is that this code satisfies equating the class to itself because we're taking a copy of the data. So here, let's get um, let's get clever about this. I'll say Q. I'll cleverly call this Q. And we'll continue uh, the refactor. Right, it's very important that we really take care of this and we refactor as we should because while our code will get the job done, most of the time you yourself, you are not just going to be reading the code. You will have colleagues who will read your code. If you publish this online, there will be people reading it, reading all your code, and it's very important to make sure that your code kind of makes sense in terms of variable names and it's kind of self-documentation. And similar to the stack, there is, this is not a complete version of the stack to make a complete version of the stack, there's much more error checking that has to be done. Here, in this video with this code, the goal is to expose you to a queue in a stack and to show you the theory behind it and a programming example with it. Uh, thank you for listening for this to this video, and uh, we'll see you for our next one.